so-called international war on terrorism. And in this environment, the media has to report, provide coverage, make analysis, comments, and the media people have a threat from both, from the state as well as the non-state actors. I understand that there's no concept of entire freedom, or absolute freedom. The freedom definitely comes with responsibility. And Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah on different occasions addressing the media has said that you must be fearless. You must have a trust in yourself. You have the power, the power which can destroy an individual and which can make a big personality out of an individual. But as this, at the same time, you must have the responsibility to behave and write in a responsible manner. Are we covering today's events in a responsible manner? Let me, a couple of minutes, tell you that the new media, the electronic media, the boom of media that you see today, more than 100 channels are being allowed to operate in this country. Naturally, the credit goes to the rulers, but the international environment also forced them. They could not stop the dissemination of information through the new technology, the satellite. But this, the channels, especially the electronic media, has played a very important role since 2002. fighting against the dictatorship in this country, played a very important role in the restoration of judiciary. We are not discussing here what happened after the restoration, but the lawyer movement, the media played a very important role in that, creating awareness among the people, their political and democratic rights, the fundamental rights, running after the different stories. So by and large, the respectable audience here will agree that the electronic media, the private TV channels have played a very important role in creating awareness among the masses. And that also gave a sort of a linkage to the state media to change its policy as well. Coming to the core of an important issue, that is the coverage of the terrorism attacks by the electronic media. How we have to reconcile with the existing PEMRA laws and the coverage of the terrorist attacks. To my opinion, the channel operators, the channel media managers, the people at the operation, regulators, and the civil society has to sit together, and they have to constitute a sort of a code of ethics, whatever you call it, so that the negative impact of the electronic media coverage is on the country's image, on our society, the psychological impact on the people when we show gruesome pictures of the bodies and the injured. And those Footages goes across the Pakistani borders. 
when they are being re-telecast and they are being shown on the social media? Is it giving us a good name? Is it bringing a positive as impact on our economy and the image of Pakistan and the Pakistanis who are traveling across the world? Or they are creating a negativity, not only within the population, within the viewers, but, but those who are sitting in the rest of the world. And we have to reconcile for that. Unfortunately, the regulators, we have been interacting with them for a long time, and they are unable to regulate. Because of the government pressure, political interference, the strength and the power of various media houses, the cross-media problem is also there. But the state has to be a state. Nobody is powerful, greater, strong than the state. And the state has to act sometime. There is a concept of self-censorship, self-responsibility. If this had been the idea, the God didn't have sent 124,000 prophets as well as the books including the Holy Quran. There's a concept of reward and punishment and that is only to create a peaceful and harmonious society. So on this aspect, I, my opinion is I have been interacting with my colleagues in the different TV channels. There is a problem of rating and marketing and commercials and demand of the viewers. Of course, you cannot allow a child go and put his hand into the fire. You will never do that. So we have to take care that are we putting our hands, rather the whole body, into the fire? Or we have to keep a distance and get the benefit out of that fire? Concluding my remarks, I must say that there is a lot of positivity in the media. And the weaknesses that we see today, and I am referring to, there are those problems, those issues which could be tackled once we take the responsibility. And it's not only the media people. It's not only we who keep on writing and speaking and delivering, disseminating the information, but those people who keep on criticizing us, raising fingers on us, trying to direct us, we have to sit together and think about the consequences of the coverages and the media dissemination for the strong future and the prosperous future of this nation. The media is very much strong today but it needs a sort of a reconciliation to reconcile with the challenges. And I'm sure that once all the stakeholders, the regulator, the government, the civil society, the media and the academicians sits together and have a brainstorming, we will come out with a positive result. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, sir. Of course, media in Pakistan over the last one decade has changed the entire complexion of communication intensity, scope, means, and mediums of mass communication. It has revolutionized into an enormous source of vision, information, and magnet for justice. 
Now I would like to request our distinguished guest speaker, Mr. Server Munir Rao, ex-director news, PTV, and renowned columnist, to express his valuable comments on the topic. Please welcome. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Namaduhu wa nasalli ala Rasulihil Kareem. I am really grateful and feel honored to be among the galaxy of media personnel, educationists, and the university staff and students. The basic principle of communication is to know the audience, especially the target audience. Otherwise, your message will never disseminate and won't bring any result. First of all, I would like to ask how many people sitting in this auditorium are from English medium? Can they raise their hands? जो इंग्लिश मीडियम पढ़े हुए हैं वो अपने हाथ खड़े करें और जो उर्दू मीडियम पढ़े हैं जिन्होंने उर्दू मीडियम में तालीम हासिल की है मैट्रिक एफए सो सर दिस इज द कम्युनिकेशन बैरियर कम्युनिकेशन द ऑडियंस आर फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान एंड वी ऑल आर डिस्कसिंग द मैसेज ऑफ द फादर ऑफ द नेशन so there is a communication gap so if the chair permits me i'll speak in urdu thank you to sathiyo baat ye hai ke qaid e azam muhammad ali jinnah baba e qaum khud english medium ke padhe hue the aur jab unko अंग्रेजों से खिताब करना होता था या दानश्वरों से या इलीट से तो वो अंग्रेजी में बोलते थे लेकिन जब जलसा आम में बोलना होता था तो वो उर्दू लिखी हुई पढ़ नहीं सकते थे तो रोमन उर्दू में उनको तकरीर लिखकर दी जाती थी और फिर वो अपना मैसेज कम्युनिकेट करते थे अगर वो पैगाम उन तक ना पहुँचता तो आज तहरीक पाकिस्तान कामयाब ना होती और वो लोग जो हिंदुस्तानी कहलाते थे पाकिस्तानी ना लिख सकते कायद अजम मोहम्मद अली जिना पूरी जिंदगी में एक बार भी जेल नहीं गए पॉलिटिशियंस होते हुए और उन्होंने मुसलमान हिंद को एक कौमी तशखस दिया उनको एक कौम बनाया और वो पाकिस्तानी कौम सामने आई लेकिन पाकिस्तान बनने के बाद से अब तक ये क्वेश्चन हर लेवल पे उठाया जाता है कि क्या हम एक कौम हैं गिरोह हैं हजूम हैं या मुख्तलफ तबकत फिक्र फिके और मजहबी जज्बात के अलम बरदार एक ऐसा हजूम है जो एक दूसरे की न बात सुनने पर तैयार है न हम में रवादारी है न ईसार है न कुर्बानी है आखिर इसकी वजह क्या है तो इस लिहाज से आज का सेमिनार इंतहाई अहम है क्योंकि इसका उनवान है कायद आजम एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबल मीडिया कायद आजम एंड मीडिया नहीं रिस्पॉन्सिबल मीडिया इस हवाले से अभी डॉक्टर सराज साहब ने बड़ी अच्छी शीला रेडी की एक कोटेशन आपको सुनाई यकीनन आप उसको समझ गए होंगे मैं आपसे एक सवाल और करूंगा कि आप में से कितने लोग ऐसे हैं जिन्होंने हजरत कायद आजम पर लिखी जाने वाली कोई किताब पूरी पढ़ी हो हाथ खड़ा कीजिए गुड सो सर दिस इज द फीडबैक of the nation and the faculty members and the university staff and students from whom we are expecting that they will not only derive their thoughts from the wisdom of qaid-e-azam muhammad ali jinnah but they will 
بیہیو ایز اے ریسپانسبل نیشن تو وہ کہتے ہیں نا کہ خشت اول چون حد میں مار کچ تا سریا میر اود دیوار کچ کہ اگر کسی عمارت کی بنیاد ہی ٹیڑھی رکھ دی جائے اینٹ ٹیڑھی آپ بنیاد میں رکھ دیں تو تا سریا آسمان تک وہ عمارت اگر اونچی جائے گی تو ٹیڑھی ہوگی تو پہلی تو میری سبمیشن اپنے آرڈینس ساتھیوں سے یہ ہے کہ دنیا میں ہم نیٹ پر بھی گھنٹے لگاتے ہیں موبائل فون پر اپنی رات کی نیندیں حرام کرتے ہیں ایک دوسرے کی غیبت انٹریگ اور ترقی کے لیے گھنٹوں کوشش کرتے ہیں لیکن اپنے آپ کو وزڈم آف نالج تک پہنچنے میں کم وقت لگاتے ہیں تو آج اگر ہم یہ عہد کر لیں کہ ہم جس قوم یا جس عنوان سے پاکستانی کہلاتے ہیں کہ اس کے فادر کے متعلق وہ کیا کہا تھا اکبر اللہ آبادی نے کہ باپ کا علم نہ بیٹے کو اگر ازبر ہو تو یہ جو چیز ہے جس بیٹے کو یہ نہ پتا ہو کہ اس کے والد کی تعلیم کیا ہے اس کی پسند ناپسند کیا ہے اور وہ کیا کرنا چاہتا ہے دنیا میں تو اس کی تربیت میں سکم رہ جاتا ہے اسی طرح اگر آپ بابائے قوم کو نہ پڑھیں گے نہ سمجھیں گے تو پھر آپ کو کیسے اندازہ ہوگا کہ ڈویژن آف انڈیا کیوں ہوئی اور ہمیں اپنی انٹیگرٹی کو مستحکم رکھنے کے لیے کیا کچھ کرنا چاہیے تو اس حوالے سے آئل ریکمینڈ کہ اگر آپ کوئی کتاب پڑھنا چاہیں تو ویسے تو بہت اچھی کتابیں لکھی گئی ہیں قائد اعظم پر آپ کی لائبریری میں بھی ہزاروں کتابیں ہوں گی لیکن ہیکٹر بولائتھو نے ایک کتاب لکھی انگلش رائٹر ہے جنا پر وہ ضرور پڑھیے اس کا اردو ٹرانسلیشن بھی اویلیبل ہے جسونت سنگھ جو انڈیا کا فارن منسٹر رہا اور آپ دیکھ لیں کتنا بڑا نام اور کتنا بڑا لیڈر اب بھی زندہ ہے اس نے قیام پاکستان کے ساٹھ سال بعد اب ہمیں تو سکسٹی سکس ایئرز ہو گئے ہیں غالباً تو ساٹھ سال کا جب پاکستان ہوا دوین آف انڈیا کے سکسٹی ایئرز کے بعد اگر انڈین فارن منسٹر جنا پہ کتاب لکھتا ہے تو دیر مسٹ بی سم تھنگ ان ہز پرسنالٹی وچ اگنیٹس ہم ٹو ریسرچ اینڈ رائٹ اے بک اور وہ ایسی ایسی سیاسی جماعتوں میں رہا ہے جہاں قائد اعظم اور پاکستان کا نام اگر گستاخی نہ ہو تو میں کہوں وہ گالی سمجھتے تھے تو انہوں نے کیوں لکھی اور اس کے بعد جسونت سنگھ کے ساتھ جو انڈیا میں